Well, you're you're living in reality, Ryan. Like you're 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 in that world. You're talking to these former players. You're you're in the underbelly of the NFL. You've seen what guys are going through. I think after Vincent Jackson died, when we talked in 2021, you said you had several conversations with with players. They were reaching out to you one by one, and and you're trying to do what you can. It's it's like there's this whole other world. Once that whistle but stopped, but it's still stigma because they reached out to me privately. They didn't say anything publicly, right? And, and that's, that's what I'm saying. That, the, the NFL that's still the almost crazy wants to ignore this stigma. world. Yeah, that's still the crazy stigma of it. Like the the fear of someone knowing you may need help is worse than actually getting the help that you need. And that's the the problem and the stigma. And I don't know if, you know, if, if the NFL helps, they, they do, they help perpetuate the, the stigma because they show players as gladiators and, um, and, and all of those things. And so I, I think they, they have a, a real hand in, in perpetrating that, that stigma. Um, but that's 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 the biggest thing that bothers me the most is I'm like, thanks for reaching out. Good. Yeah. Um, and some of them are incredibly good football players and who could have an incredible impact. Uh, and I'm like. You can you can tell everybody this, you know, you can and it's OK. No one's going to judge you. You've been you think somebody will judge you, but no one's going to judge you for it. In fact, you may actually be viewed as. Um, stronger than you ever have been seen before. I mean, obviously, with, without getting too specific, what are you hearing? I mean, what what does this world really look like that isn't necessarily going to be broadcasted on, you know, state-run TV? And then we can, I mean, and you've been honest with, with your life. We'll get into it. But, I mean, it's just got to be darker than we can imagine. Well, yeah. I, I mean, the, the guys I've had reach out to me are like, they're having suicidal ideation, you know, that, that there's their belief is they're better off not being here. And I had just have to, you know, grab a hold of them and say, you don't understand the value that you have, man. Uh, you have no idea. Like you could move, you couldn't move mountains a hundred times what you did as a football player. It just doesn't register because you don't, you don't understand your identity outside the uniform. What, what does it look like when that uniform comes off? Who are you? I was there. I was exactly there. So I know ex- what that is. I, I think that when you, when you find purpose outside the, the great game of football, you, you won't believe how great the game of football becomes to you again. I, I think that speaks directly to how the game of football has become a part of my life again. Like there was a mo- there was a time where I resented it and it was toxic and but that wasn't the game, it was me. And so when I found purpose outside of that, like the game came back to me. You know, I call games every weekend. I was at I was at Georgia Alabama this last weekend. What a great football game. Um you know, I I, I call some NFL I'm going to be calling some NFL games here later in the year. Um it's I love the game of football. And so I think that couldn't be a truer statement that when you find purpose outside of it and you're not tied up to the identity of it, the game of football actually gets greater and comes back to you in a way that is so much more, um, you know, just plentiful uh, in, in your life. 